This is a tensegrity table. This unique structure uses a series of strings in tension to hold a tabletop in an elevated position. It looks like it's somehow floating. We became interested in these structures when a customer emailed us with a simple question. Can I replace the strings with pairs of attracting magnets? That sounds like something that would look even more interesting. Here's an example of the same table, but with attracting magnets replacing the center string. Two strong disc magnets attracting towards one another across the gap provides a force that pulls up the top half of the table. We used 5 8 inch diameter by quarter inch thick discs. With this table, the load we can put on top is limited by how much the magnets are attracting to one another. If we push down with more than that force, the magnets move farther apart, the attraction force drops, and the table collapses. Naturally, we couldn't resist building a larger one. This example, built from scrap wood, used a pair of stronger one inch diameter by half inch thick discs. As we've assembled it here, it doesn't hold up too much weight. And that's because we tied the strings shorter, aiming for a larger gap between the magnets to be more dramatic. It's a trade-off. The farther apart we tie the halves together, the closer the magnets get. That means stronger magnetic force, but with a smaller gap. Okay, you know we couldn't stop there. This monster uses a pair of two inch diameter by one inch thick disc magnets. Be careful with magnets this powerful. We needed steel cable for the strings on this one because the powerful magnets tended to stretch out our yellow string. When we untie one string, we can see how the attracting magnets tend to pull the top half up. So, if we pull it too hard, it bangs down. But what if we don't do it? untie it? It's got crooked and the magnets are trapped. Yeah, the magnets just pull it together. Let's see if I tighten it down. Can I let go? That's pretty good. Yeah. Tighten it down. When we untie one string, we can see how the attracting magnets tend to pull the top half up. With magnets in line on the string and touching, it holds together quite well. With a big gap between these side magnets, the force isn't enough to stop the center magnets from pulling the top up. You can see my finger needs to push down on that corner. As I try to slowly bring the magnets together, it reaches a point where it tips the other way. The magnets get close enough to the point where they're stronger than the center magnets and snap together. It zooms right past the sweet spot where there's balance. There doesn't seem to be a stable point where they balance each other out, with both magnet pairs having gaps between them. We're going to examine the forces in a tensegrity table and try and figure out why replacing the strings with magnets won't work. Let's start with the little table, where strings hold the two halves of the table together. It's interesting because you don't expect a string to hold a weight in compression, trying to squish it together. Strings only hold loads in tension. So how does this work? Let's draw a diagram of what's going on. Floating up in the air without any support, this top blue piece would just fall down. To prevent this, 
we tie a string in the middle. If the weight of the top piece tries to push it down, the string resists this movement. We'll call the tension in the string T naught. You can imagine that the tighter we try and pull this string together, the more it drives the blue tabletop upward. To prevent it from flying away, we'll tie similar strings out at the sides. And these strings have tension in them as well. Let's think about the forces acting on this blue piece. The tension of the center string is acting to pull the part up. The tension of the outer strings act to pull the part down. For example, say we tie these together such that the center string has a tension of three pounds. It follows that the sum of the tension in all the outer strings is the same three pounds. Can we replace one of these strings with a pair of attracting magnets? These magnets aren't repelling one another, they're attracting. Just like the strings were in tension, the magnets are trying to pull together. Will it work? The overall force diagram looks pretty similar. The force of the magnets pull the part up in the center, while the forces from the outer strings pull it down. It's interesting to see what happens when we add a mass, a load, on top of the table. The weight of this mass acts to push the tabletop down. When it's balanced, the added mass means that the tension in the strings is reduced. Of course, two magnets separated by some gap only attract with some amount of force. If we add too much weight to the top, the table should collapse. There'll be nothing holding it up. Now let's get to the interesting part. What happens if we try and replace all the strings with pairs of attracting magnets? To try and answer this, let's take a small step and just replace one of the outer strings with attracting magnets. You might think that the string with magnets is functionally just like a string in tension. It's like a rubber band. It can hold a certain amount of weight. This is sort of true, but not completely. Why not? Because the more you load a regular string or a rubber band with tension, the more it resists, the more it forces it, opposes you with. With this pair of magnets, any added tension acts to increase the gap between the magnets, which decreases the force it can provide. Let's draw a simplified diagram of this blue tabletop to see how these changing forces cause instability. We can think of the remaining strings as fixed. So the top piece is kind of revolving around this point on the top right. The center magnets act to push the part up, while the new magnets act to pull it down. To make this work, all we have to do is make the torques acting on this part equal, right? Mm, not really. Think about what happens when the part rotates up just a tiny amount. How do the forces change when this happens? If we rotate it up a little bit, the two center magnets get closer together. This increases the force. What happens to the outer magnets with a bit of upward rotation? They get farther apart. And that means their force decreases. So the sum of these two changes both act to make a slight upward rotation want to move and rotate even more in that same direction. We could consider the opposite rotation, rotating downward, and we see a similar story. Downward rotation moves the center magnets a bit farther apart, resulting in weaker force. Downward rotation moves the outer magnets closer together, providing more force. Once again, the sum of these two changes act to make the very slight downward rotation tend to want to rotate even more. The stability of this system is like a ball sitting on a mountaintop. There's a point where it could balance, but any little bump that moves it away from that perfect balancing point tends to push it further and further away from that centered spot. We don't like to be the bearer of bad news, but this seems to be the way magnets work. Learn more about it at our website and our complete blog article about this whole story.